Welcome to this Spark City tutorial. In this video, I will give a general overview of the Spark City model, and it's meant for new developers of the Spark City model and new users of the Spark City model. Uh, the Spark City model is constantly developing, so I will give an overview as it is in 2017. Right now it's December 2017, so probably some of the features will change over time. The Spark City model is built around a central part, and there are some modules that are supporting the central part and adding some extra features to it. In this video, I will focus mainly on this central part of the Spark CD model, and I will give a summary of the modules that are supporting the central part. If you want to know more about the specifics of the modules, there will be some videos uh, available on our channel uh, where people present about the features of these modules. So let's take a look at the central part of the Spark City model. We call it the Spark City neighborhood because we load in specific neighborhoods using their GIS data. And we use GIS data on the road network indicated by the gray lines. We load in the buildings of the neighborhood and we indicate what type of functionality these buildings have. We load in the parking spaces indicated by the blue lines right here. And the last thing that we implement is the electricity network. So inside the Spark City neighborhood, there are some agents living and we simulate those agents. The first agent that we simulate is a resident or a commuter. Those are the people that live inside the neighborhood or work inside the neighborhood. We also simulate electric vehicles. Some of the residents or commuters might own an electric vehicle and those are the vehicles of interest for our model. And lastly, we add charge points to the neighborhood where the electric vehicles can be charged. Now, the residents and the commuters are characterized by their income class, driver type, and the times that they use their electric vehicle for driving. Now, the electric vehicles are characterized by their class, if they are lease or private owned vehicles, and by their battery type. And the residents or commuters can use their electric vehicles to either make leisure trips, weekend trips, or work trips, depending on their type of behavior. All this data is gathered from the CBS. The charge points that we have in the neighborhood are private charge points, office charge points, and public charge points. Depending on the type of parking space, a specific type of charge point is installed. These agents we call local agents because they live inside the neighborhood. So this describes the whole central part of the Spark City model. With this part of the Spark City model, you can already assess driving and charging behavior of electric vehicles under certain assumptions. You can, for instance, run simulations with a specific amount of electric vehicles in the neighborhood and a specific amount of charge points and see how the interaction between those two will follow from your agent-based simulation. So now let's take a look at the modules that are supporting the Spark City model and adding some new features. Firstly, we have the buying module. The purpose of the buying module is to predict what type of electric vehicles will be available for car buyers on the Dutch car market. Firstly, we have the battery manufacturer. The battery manufacturer is determining the available battery types on the market. This is based on research done on learning curves of batteries. Secondly, we have the car manufacturer. The car manufacturer is using the batteries to produce different types of electric vehicles. And thirdly, we have the car dealer, which is receiving the different car types from the car manufacturer. So in the end, we have a car dealer that is offering different types of electric vehicles. Now the residents and commuters are, are able to buy these different types of car. Now the residents and commuters are able to buy these different types of electric vehicles from the car dealer based on their characteristics, the residents or commuters will make certain buying decisions. And once they buy a car, the car dealer will create a new electric vehicle inside the neighborhood. Now you don't have to use this buying module, but if you do, it can predict what type of electric vehicles will be available in your Spark City neighborhood. And the second module that we have is the charge point module. The goal of the charge point module is to predict how much and what type of charging stations will be installed inside the neighborhood based on a certain municipality budget. The municipality that is simulated 
gives funds to a charge point operator. And the charge point operator is able to install new charging stations inside the neighborhood. The third module is the smart charging module. The goal of the smart charging module is to enable smart charging inside the neighborhood. The type of smart charging that is available is smart charging based on price optimization. For this reason, we simulate a spot market. And the spot market is generating electricity prices based on demand and supply. These prices are used by a virtual entity called the aggregator, which is communicating with the charge points. When a car is charging at a charge point and he wants to smart charge, the aggregator will make an optimal charge schedule based on the spot market prices. Then this schedule is sent back to the charging point, which it can use to charge the electric vehicle at lowest cost possible. Now the electricity usage of the charge point is also linked to the spot market to influence the prices. This feedback loop was crucial to do some research about the effects of smart charging on spot market prices. Now the last module that we have is the energy module. The goal of the energy module is to determine the electricity mix at a specific moment in time in the electricity network of the Spark City neighborhood. Now this is important because we want to analyze the synergy between electricity production and electricity demand by electric vehicles. Energy generation is simulated by looking at different generator types and see how much it produce in a specific year. We make assumptions about how much installed capacity we expect in the future to predict what type of electricity will be available in the Spark City neighborhood. So the energy generators are connected to the electricity network inside the Spark City neighborhood. Now these are all the modules that are currently available for the Spark City neighborhood. More modules will be available in the future. Now there is a big difference between the types of agents available in these modules and the types of agents available inside the Spark City neighborhood. For instance, the battery manufacturer is influenced by global trends rather than local trends. So we call these agents global agents. If you want to analyze a different neighborhood, you can still use these modules because they are depending on global trends rather than local trends. This is the whole overview of the Spark City model as it is in December 2017. If you want to know more about the specific modules, check out the presentations on our channel. They also outline what you can actually calculate and assess with the different types of modules.